times past, the ancients traveled to many places. They seeded many worlds. One known as Axion has changed much since the ancients left. Many battles have been fought. Lands have been conquered. Empires have been forged and destroyed. In the face of monumental obstacles, great achievements have been made. have been born and made into heroes. Monuments are carved to commemorate those fallen in battle. The legends continue. Welcome, folks! to a new let's play of Might and Magic 9 The Writ of Fate, released back in 2002 by Freedio and developed by New World Computing. Now, sadly on the release of this game, it was actually compiled with quite a few severe game-breaking bugs, so Freedio managed to uh, release a 1.2 patch almost immediately after the game was released. Now, although this did create quite a few of the severe bugs, there were still quite a lot of bugs left in the game, and quite a few of them would in fact actually make some of the quests uncompletable. But luckily there were fan made projects uh, to launch patches and that includes Telp 1.3 who built on 1.2 and managed to correct further some of the bugs making the game overall more playable. Now I'm actually playing this on Windows 7 thanks to the legends at GOG, goodoldgames.com who take old games and remove the digital rights, managing, uh, digital rights management and make the game available on a wider range of modern platforms like Windows 7 and OS X, for some games that is. All available at quite a low cost, surprisingly. Anyway, let's get straight into the game. Now, I've been thinking long and hard on what sort of party I should create, and I've decided I'm going to have a uh, combination of a Lich, a Priest, a Ranger, and a Gladiator. Lich is obviously a... Um, a undead uh, sorcerer type character that specializes in elemental and dark magic and they can create some devastating magical attacks. Um, Priest quite obviously is going to be my, well she in this case is going to be my standard healer. Um, the ranger is going to be my typical archer but the ranger is also going to be my kind of thief in this uh, so they're going to be in charge of um, disarming traps, perception, uh, identifying monsters and all that uh, clobber. And finally, I will have the Gladiator, like I said, which will basically be my tank who will take the brunt of the damage. Oh yes. Now, I could go with um, random uh, computer-generated names, but I've decided I'll make it a bit more interesting. Let me Pick me. Firstly, we will be an elf for the Lich, and they will Pick have a truth. happy Just voice, be because the Lich in this game is actually going to be me. Oh yes. I've been talking to a lot of my friends, and overall we've decided that I should be the Lich. And the other three characters, surprise surprise, I'm going to be naming after some friends of mine on YouTube. So we have Shelley, the mage, who will, well, Shelley the initiate, who will eventually become a Lich. So what skill should I give him? You can choose um, two starting skills. The game automatically gives you um, two, depending on whether you go as a might oriented class or a magic oriented class. In uh, the Might um, path, it's uh, Blade and Armor, and in the Initiate path, the Magic path, you get Elemental and Spirit. 
Now, I'm going to give my character bow. Um, bows are awesome. You want every character in your game to have, you know, a bow or a thrown weapon. I think uh, liches are actually a lot better than thrown weapons than bows. Um, <coughs> I'm also going to give him... Um, let me see. I think I might give him learning. Basically what that does is that um, provides a starting uh, additional bonus. For uh, all the XP you get, you get, I think it's, oh yeah, you get a 9% bonus, which is pretty damn awesome. But that doesn't mean that some of my characters will level up slightly different to others. Um, but that will be a minuscule difference at the start of the game. Either that or I could give him meditation. Um, I'll give him learning, why not? The extra experience at the start of the game will be lovely. And I'm actually going to lower my might down to 7. Lower my endurance down to 7. Bump my magic all the way up to 25. And elves, they get a plus 2 bonus. Well, they get a 2 to 1 bonus in accuracy. So I'm going to raise that to 25, meaning I will hit. Uh, well, I will have a lot of magic points. I will do a lot of magic based damage. And I should hopefully hit monsters fairly uh, repeatedly. Um, and I've got one more point, so I will dump that in endurance. Actually, no, I can't because elves have a 1 to 2 uh, endurance. So I will put it in luck as a subtle influence from the game. It is the most viable and ability of a character to use as magical attacks. Um, I'll give it a speed, why not? I like to be able to attack quite quickly. Right, our second character. Now, actually, I've just noticed in this uh, version of the game that I can't actually click on the character portrait. So instead, this we just click the number two, and you will uh, go to the second one down. Uh, vice versa with three and four. Now, this delightful person here will be a another elf. Pick me. Pick me. Let me Just pick me. Should I have as a human? Humans are an interesting class, as they are the most balanced. Um, they don't get any 2-1 uh, to one, um, bonuses, but they don't get any 1-2 to two, but, uh, deductions, or, well, bonuses, I suppose. Uh, basically, when I say 1-2, to two, I mean it will take 2 skill points to increase that stat by 1. Um, I could have an elf, but I'll go on, why not? I'll encourage a, a bit of diversity throughout this game, why not? You will be... Katie, you will be my priest, and you will be, um... Come on, pick me! You are fairly sarcastic. I'm here to play. You're not that angry. Of course, I'd let me at it. Um, you are... Yeah, go on, you'll be assertive. Yeah, go on. We need to have uh, some of a backbone in this party. Um, so, we're going to lower your might and lower your endurance to as low as we possibly can. Sadly, it's 9 and 9. But that's not too bad. Um, <coughs> we're also going to lower your speed and luck, though, to get an extra few points. And we're going to pump magic up to 25. Actually, no, we're not. We're going to put it to 22. And we're going to put quite a few points in accuracy. The main reason you'll probably die at the start of Might and Magic 9 is the fact, the sure annoying fact, that your characters <laughs> hardly hit opponents at all which can be incredibly frustrating. So to combat that, I'm gonna try and give them as higher accuracy as possible. Well, at least for my um, mages, who will be at the back lines, you know, constantly barraging opponents with their arrows. Um, likewise, I'm just gonna give you bow and learning. Uh, you will, of course, be my priest. And now we get to the, actually, no, we'll have the ranger here. Uh, of I'm course, we've got to play. choose a race first. Come on, hit me. Um, Sorry? What should we have? Now, it would make sense as a ranger to have... Um, uh, well, to go as an elf due to the accuracy increase. But, sadly, um, I've already got an elf. So, I'm going to make me. my hit ranger me. a... Come on. Just the hero for you. Dwarf. Yeah, why not? We'll go as a dwarf. They have a high endurance. Um, and they have a... Uh, Fairly low magic, but it's reasonable. And they have a... Ah, yes, they have a 
one to two bonus slash deduction and magic, which is good. You don't need any magic at all. Um, I don't get an increase in that. Okay, well, this is good. Um, if they can have a two to one bonus, we're going to exploit it. So we're going to raise that to the maximum of 25. Um, we're going to lower your... Actually, no, we're going to keep your luck the same as you're going to be my thief. And we're going to bump your might up to 18. And we're going to bump your accuracy up to 15. Uh, actually, I could lower speed. Um, actually, no. We should be good to go with this. Now, our thief. Don't give him the Sarm Trap at the start of the game. Why? Because immediately at the start of the game, you can do something which will get you the Sarm Trap skill. Hence, all making it a bit of a waste. Now, I'm going to give my uh, ranger the bow. Because, like I said, it's crucial. And I'm also going to give him... Um, no point giving him merchant, as he can only train to expert in that. Could give him perception. Um, hmm. Well... I'll probably make the most return on perception, so I'll give him perception. And he will have a... Yeah, go on, he'll have a sarcastic voice. And we'll call him... Paul. Paul the Ranger. Sounds quite good. Now, last, but certainly not least, we will have our gladiator. And our gladiator is not actually going to be a woman. He is going to be a male. Pick me! Pick me! Come on! Sorry. Pick me. Or oh, half old, sorry. And we will call him Ben. Uh, not. There we go. Ben. Now, he's going to be a warrior, obviously, because he'll be a gladiator. And he'll have the angry voice. Now, let's have a look. We're going to give him bow. And I am usually give my gladiator shield as they can train to Grandmaster in it. Um, yeah, that's looking quite good. Gladiator is quite inter uh, <coughs> interestingly kind of actually trained grandmasters in armor, which leads me to believe they have. Ah, uh, oh yes, because of course they get grandmaster and shield. It would be a bit overkill if they had access to grandmaster and armor, and shield and dodge. Even though dodge would be useless with armor, as dodge is only really effective if um, well, dodge is only effective if you're not wearing any armor at all. So there we go. Um, I don't have anyone with Merchant, but I don't really need anyone with Merchant right at the start of the game, so that'll do. Right, stats. Say goodbye to your magic. Um, endurance, we want that quite high. But Might, 25 please. Um, bump that up to 18. Um, actually no, we'll put that at 16. I'll bump that up to 16 as well. So we should have a fairly good, decent chance to hit. Um, yep. Okay, let's have a look at our party. We have Shelly, the Elf Initiate. HP 22, Spell Points 25. Katie, the Human Initiate. Uh, Katie, the Human Initiate. HP 23, Spell Points 24. Paul, the Dwarf Fighter. HP 40, Spell Points 0. And Ben, the Half Orc Fighter. HP 36, spell points 0. Now, I know what you're thinking. Uh, the Gladiator, being the main tank in this game, probably should have the most HP. And they will over the course of time. Because I will gradually increase it with, um, you know, um, <coughs> attribute increasing barrels. And I do believe um, upgrading the Gladiator will give him a significant increase in HP, if I remember correctly. Anyway, let's get started. Into the game we go. And after a few minutes of a black screen, we get greeted at this screen. Old man! Hello, what can I do for you? Um, we would like to start our training, please. Ah, I knew that this day would come. When your first revenge, you would grow too strong to be quenched here in Ravensford. Very well, I shall help you with your training. Where do we start? Take these scrolls to begin with. They will tell you all you need to know about interface. Uh, breaking the third wall a bit here, mate. Have a good look around this museum. Click on the buttons. There are things you may encounter in the world. 
Some may help you, others may kill. What do we do when we're finished? When you've finished all the scrolls, come back and visit me before you leave. Why? I have something to... I have something left to give you. Alright. Goodbye. Okay, this old man is apparently our grandpa. <laughs> I hope that all being very psyche to him. Um, you don't actually have to read the scrolls that he gives you. Uh, right here. Bit of a bedtime reading if you actually want to read it. Uh, I'll let you all peruse it at your own will. Anyway, we're going to equip uh, our equipment as we might as well. As you can see here, I'm looking quite uh, camp. But, uh, well, I will look pretty awesome. Well, fairly later in the game, sadly. But, oh well. And I'll give myself my own new starting spell of Elemental Bolt. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! How we get an iron ring? Nothing enchanted on it, so there's no real point in equipping it. Katie, looking uh, a lot better than us. I mean, come on, we just look so weird at the moment. Um, we'll give you a student's bow, and we'll give you elemental yes. bolt. You also have an iron ring, but it's got nothing of a worthwhile on it. Paul, we will give you all this stuff, as it is useful for you. Mainly your bow, though. As we can see here, he does a... Uh, well, he's got plus two to um chance to hit with bow, which is awesome. Now, let's have a look. Yeah, as you can see, plus five and plus six chance to hit. Absolutely awesome. Uh, Kate is slightly less. Benji, sadly, has the lowest. Oh, well. It's kind of interesting that the mage has a... <laughs> the, well, the initiate has the highest uh, chance to hit compared to the Soon to be gladiator. Either way, um, we will equip you of your gear. And as you can see, he's already quite laden down, which is awesome. Let's talk to Grandpa. Why not? Hello. Um, you don't sound like anything like the voice I was giving you. What can I do for you? We're ready to leave. Well, I guess this strong enough. Good luck. You can find a boat waiting at the dock to the north. I don't expect to see you again. Why? You've always been too big for Ravensford. I'm sure you'll find your destiny out there somewhere, not here. I have some things left to give you. They will impact knowledge that may keep you alive. Farewell. Uh, in part, sorry. Goodbye, Grandpa. And yes, just like that, we leave our Grandpa behind. What fun. And as you can see, he gave us Disarm Trap and Identify Item. Awesome. So, we're going to give Disarm Trap to... Um, our ranger here, All right. as he will need it. As you can see, he can only get up to master, but that should be fine. When it comes to later in the game and we're uh, opening some really high level chests, we should have enough HP, enough um, spells to uh, try and overcome the effects of them. Right, now the other spell we got, well, uh, spell, skill, was identify item. Now I can't remember who can actually train to the highest in it. I believe it was actually the, the Lich. Sure. So let's have a look. Yeah, the Lich can get quite high in it, up to Master. So good to see that hasn't been wasted. Right. Let's go. Now, there's some uh, scrolls and bits of uh, parchment lying around here. I highly recommend you pick up these ones. Uh, shut the doors. We're laying in a draft. Gramps here will go ape shit at us. Um, you can pick up these scrolls here, but they are basically like the interface ones. Um, might as well show you. Yeah, look, just a load of um, pimps and tutorials. Um, pause if you really want to read them. I don't know why you would. Well, I suppose if you're new to the game, but you might as well read them yourself while playing the game. But I mainly pick up these ones as they're good for sales value. And they can get you out of some um, tricky situations, mainly chain lightning. Which is awesome. One of my favourite spells in the game. Purely due to the fact that it looks awesome. Right, I might as well show you all the museum. So, come this way. And we will see some fairly impressive creatures. We won't be fighting those for a while if I can help it. We'll see those soon. Not for a while, not for a while. Not for a while. Uh, not for a while. Definitely not for a while. Uh, not for a while. Very soon. 
you got to wonder how they are suspended right in the air like that. And that's like, it's a solid pane of glass, you know, spanning all the way to the back of the wall. Right. If you come over here, you will see a button. As usual with buttons, you have to press them. So, let's see what it does. Basically, it will bring out this fairly awesome fight between this evil ground sorcerer and this, um, <clears throat> Oculus. Now, over there, the, uh, Evil Grand Sorcerer is sporting some awesome spells, ranging from Spell Reaver to Chain Lightning. Whereas the Oculus is getting a few good blows in on him. Though this is a bit too close for comfort. Oh, come here! I think we can get some hits in him. Oh, no, no. Actually, we're there, we can. <laughs> this fight can last for a while, but hopefully it will end soon. Oh, look at that. Oh! Oh, oh, is he going to get him? Come on. You can do it. Come on. Go on. You can get him. Go on. A few more hits. I, I would need your hand, mate, but I'm stuck here. <laughs> Go on. Oh. Come on. He's almost gone. Yeah. Look at that. And he will just stand there. Oh, no he won't. He's walking here. Oh. And he will look fairly moodily at us before teleporting away. And I'm not sure if you can uh, display it again. Oh, yes you can. If you really so wanted to. But we're not going to watch that. Now, we could go to the outside world, but we have one more bit of the museum left. So I might as well show it. As you can see, there's a few things we will find in the world. Campfires, pots, those highly important. They are essential for the town portal. These, which can give you um temporary, um uh, temporary, <coughs> temporary boost. And these are stat increasing barrels. And that one is actually uh, luck, I believe. Right, let's go in here and have a look at this uh, snazzy little demonstration. We got this uh, monk-like looking character here. He's getting loads of bountiful goods from that chest. Bountiful goods from that one, but uh oh, the black chest, the strongest chest in the game. What will he get behind that, I wonder? Death! Nothing is cooler than a bit of death. Um, the front row uh, chests here, we'll be uh, seeing those quite a lot. Uh, we'll be seeing chests like that for a while. Black chests, whew. Definitely not for a long time. Then we can actually run around the back here, if you so wanted to, but we don't need to. Anyway, that's all we can do here, so we might as well run away. Or go and catch our boat. So let's roll. Now, you actually do get a few starting shots in Ravenswood, although there's no real point. Um, there's a trainer over there uh, who isn't actually there. But there is a fairly snazzy obstacle course, which you can uh, test yourself on if you so wanted to. I'm not going to bother as it's uh, a bit time consuming. Uh, there's a bank over there which you could use, but we have no gold. Um, we could sell some of our scrolls there uh, at the um, general store. But we wouldn't get the best price, as no one currently has a merchant. And there's a tab in there, which I don't really know why you would use at the start of the game immediately. Ready to tip one back? Ooh. Um, can I ask you some questions? What do you know about adventuring? Don't do it. <laughs> Alright, well, that's put me off. That's the end of the Let's Play, guys. I've been Shell of X, and... No, 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 we're going to continue on. I'm being furiously prodded here by my uh, director that w the show must go on. And when I say my director, I mean the little voice in my head that's driving me mad. Wait, what am I talking about? I am mad. Only joking. Right. Enemies! Let's lay into them. You can see how quickly they are demolished with our bow and arrows. Mainly due to the high accuracy. Let's have a look. Who did the most hits then? Um... Paul hits Lobopod for 7, Ben hits Lobopod for 4. Good to see that accuracy in me and Katie's stats really is paying off. 
Now you may have wondered that they haven't actually dropped any.